Hello, everybody. I am Mike Varnakis from Security National Life's Marketing Department. I have the pleasure to be here today with two amazing gentlemen. Uh, if you guys want to take a minute and introduce yourselves. Yeah, sure. Um, I go first. Um, I'm Jeremy Cox. I'm our uh, Sales Development Director, so I'm here in Oklahoma. Uh, but I work with um, our home office team. I also get the privilege of working with our field team uh, to go out in the field and just talk about what works, uh, what doesn't work, some best practices with agents, um, get to develop some of our sales resources, our scripts and things like that. And uh, one of my biggest privileges I have is to get together with uh, Mr. Stephen Lowry, uh, who is uh, one of our market directors. And I'm happy that he's on the, on the call today. So I will flip it to you, sir, and let you introduce yourself. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Mike. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Stephen Lowry. I am a market sales director in the final, final expense division at Security National Life. So let me tell you what that means. It's a fancy title. Here's what it means. I sell final expense insurance. I recruit agents to sell final expense insurance. I recruit team leaders to develop agents to sell final expense insurance, and I provide protection for my neighbors uh, in the event that there would be a, uh, a death in their family and that they might need uh, some financial help to get through those things. That's what I do for a living. And it's good to be here today. Thank you. Thank you both for, uh, for being here today. I appreciate it. Go ahead, Jeremy. Absolutely. So let's just jump right in. Um, everybody, Stephen, talks about, um, you know, leads uh, in final expense. You know, you gotta have somebody to see. You have to be able to tell your story. Um, you got to get in front of people and give them an opportunity to put the protection in place. Um, so maybe just give us your thoughts on uh, maybe the importance of, of leads uh, for you and your team. Um, you know, if you've got some favorite lead sources that you use, uh, anything like that that you can speak to about, um, you know, your thoughts on leads. Uh, I think that I have mixed thoughts on leads, to be honest with you. I, th I think that my uh, most successful team rarely buys leads. They create leads. Uh, my most successful independent agents uh, buy leads. And, and direct mail is the king of all, mail so of all lead sources um, because it has the most consistent uh, ROI. All right, here's what I mean when I say that. There is a predictable ratio of leads to sales when you use direct mail, and it's right around 20, 22%. Has been for years, it'll, and, and it'll likely never change. That's what the ratio of conversion is uh, to an experienced agent that's pretty good. Um, other lead sources might be less expensive, they might be more expensive, might be a higher quality lead, but that doesn't necessarily lead to a higher ROI, which is return on investment. In other words, your marketing dollar is a marketing dollar, no matter what you do with it. The return on that marketing dollar varies, and it can vary by lead source. Let me circle back to what I said earlier. My most successful team rarely buys leads. They create leads. If you get within 10 feet of one of those people that are on that team uh, at the grocery store, they're going to sell you insurance right there in the grocery store. They create leads. They're, they knock doors. They have a door knocking team that goes out once a week and knocks doors, gives surveys, right? And they generate a, a lot of business that way. Um, a created lead is, is far more valuable, uh, has, has the highest ROI of any lead out there, but it is emotionally taxing to create that lead. And that's why very few people do it. It's, a, it's, it's hard. It's hard to do it. Okay. Um, so, uh, for most of us, we have to buy leads because we, 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 that's what it takes. So we have to buy leads. Direct mail is the king of leads. For the foreseeable future, that's going to remain true. Those are my thoughts on leads. Gotcha. Um, just as a follow-up to that, um, how much conversation do you have with uh, agents that take their lead source, whether it's the creating it at the store, whether it's door knocking, direct mail, Facebook, telesales, you know, TV leads. We have all these lead sources. Um, how important would you say having a good predictable system of referrals, getting a referral is? Have you heard many stories on uh, just some best practices on referrals um, 
Yeah, there is one. There is one best practice, and there's nothing magic about it. Ask for them. Ask for them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> ask for them. Uh, ask for referrals, and sometimes you'll get yes, and sometimes you'll get no. But continue asking. Uh, there's no magic script to follow to get referrals. There's there's nothing you can necessarily do to influence that other than ask for it. Do a good job for your for your prospect. Turn them into a client, and then ask for a referral. That's the that's the secret, but it's not a secret. It is. I was in the field one time with a guy, and he just straight up admitted that he was terrible at asking for referrals. And so we created this um, document um, on the final expense side, and and we determined that referrals are kind of about um, how did I do, and who do you know, right? Real basic. And I told him on the next call, I said, after you make this sale, I just want you to hand this lady a piece of paper and ask her to do a favor for you. <laughs> and so he was real hesitant about it. And I said, look, you're not asking for him anyway. And so he, at the end of the sale, he handed him the piece of paper. There was four questions on it. He got raving reviews about how he did. And then the lady started filling out the bottom of who she knew. And uh, we got out to the driveway and uh, <laughs> he looks down at the paper and he looks over to me and goes, she gave me eight names and phone numbers. And uh, I said, look, you don't even have to ask, but you at least have to ask, right? Like, and you're asking is, would you mind filling this out for me? And I, I've seen that work. I've seen agents tell people to get their phones out and, you know, ask for them. But Stephen, I think you're, you're hitting the nail on the head, bro. Like a lot of people just don't ask for the referral. And as a result, um, they don't capitalize on their lead source. Um, I think it was Tommy one time that said, if you just got one extra sale a week from a referral, it adds like $36,000 to your annual premium uh, just from a referral source. So right. I love that answer. Yeah. Well, uh, a very wise prophet once said that we don't have because we don't ask. And it's that true. is the truth. And I'm going to tell you that I always ask the next question. And the next question is, why? It's always the next question. The next question never changes. It's always why. Why is your friend bad at asking referrals? I'm going to give you the answer. I'm not expecting you to give me the answer. I'm going to give I'm it ready. to you. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't believe in himself. That's why. He doesn't believe in himself. He has got to overcome that whatever it is on the inside of him that makes him shy to recognize that he deserves it. Right. That's good. Sure. That's sure. good. There's a fear there. There's a, not much confidence, all that stuff. Um, well, let's shift gears a little bit. Um, hey, you know, Jeremy, uh, I, yes. I take it a step further. You owe me that referral. I take it, I take it that far. <laughs> you do, come in with the mindset of I'm getting some referrals because yeah. I just drove out here and you owe it yeah. to me. I love that. Yeah, that's you good. That's that's good. Um, well, let's let's talk about another uh, important um, R word that we call uh, recruiting. And uh, Stephen, I know you're doing some uh, unique things out there in your market with some uh, recruiting. I know you're a believer in recruiting, but let's let's start with this idea. Of why would somebody want to become a part of uh, Stephen Lowry's team? I mean, what is it about your team? What is it about you and your leadership? Uh, that you feel is a, a valuable asset to helping somebody um, either start a career in final expense or, uh, you know, improve their career in final expense. Let's start with you first. And, and what is it about you that you feel is something that agents can, can benefit from? Um, well, everything is kind of uh, tied together. So I don't know that you can really remove me from the process and say, Stephen Lowry is the key to it. I think it's more of a philosophy thing. Um, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to teach an agent the product and the company and the logistics of doing business with Security National Life. That's number one. Actually, I'm going to do three things. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to the point where you feel like they owe you a referral. Okay? And that's, a, that's mindset training. That's, that's in here. Right? but everybody has to go through it. Um, and the third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a future. I'm going to show you what your milestones are. And when you hit those milestones, 
I'm going to increase your status at Security National Life. And I'm going to give you a new set of milestones. And I'm going to hold your hand and walk you through how to accomplish those milestones. And then we're going to do it again. Um, and I'm going to help you build a career. I'm going to help you build an organization. I'm going to help you build a business um, that is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Mike? Posterity? I'm going to help you build posterity, legacy. That's why you need to come to Stephen Lowry's team. Love that. Love that. Um, what are what are kind of your what have been your best sources for recruiting? Are you have you had multiple different avenues that you use? Is it uh, you know one that kind of tends to bring the the right type of folks to you? And and how does how has that been working for you as far as your where of recruiting? Um, that's a very very simple question to answer. All uh, everything works, okay. Everything works, nothing works forever, except one thing. The single best source of agents is agents. So if I do a good job, they owe me a referral, right? Gotcha, right. <laughs> same right. philosophy with the sale, right, yeah? Yeah, so it's exactly the same thing. Who's my customer, Jeremy? Yeah. Who is my customer, Stephen Lowry? Agents. agents. Yep. If agents. I do a good job, they owe me more agents. That's it. Right. Love that. I like what you said about um, about giving somebody a future. You know, I, I think a lot of times in the final expense world, uh, you know, people do a lot of dating around with a lot of different people and That's they're scared to get married. Job. You know, they're scared to get married to a, a company, scared to get married to a, a, a trainer or, you know, a leader in their territory. And, you know, to have a future, you it has to be a mutual commitment, um, yeah, it, you know, it, time it, and energy. Sure, and and if I could expand on that, I'm, uh, I love the way you you framed that as uh, dating around versus getting married, and um, a lot of times it's the company that doesn't want to get married, right? We want to give you a high contract and give you a little basic training to send you on your way. Call me if you need a, need something, right? Um, and that's what insurance companies do, and um, I think that we've got an opportunity to do something else. Let's, let's take that. Let, let's invest in this agent. Let's, I'm going to commit to you too, right? I'm going to give you this career path. I'm going to help you with your mindset so that you understand that you're the prize. You deserve that sale. You deserve that referral. Um, uh, you deserve to build a business here. Uh, it, you know, and that kind of also in a roundabout way touches back on commission structures, right? So um, what what insurance companies tend to do is uh, I'm going to pay you the highest commission I can pay you um, and put the least amount of effort into you. And what I, what I have seen over years and years is that that's not necessarily the way for an agent to earn a high income. Um, a lot of agents make way more money on a lower contract uh, when they've got a set of goals that they can work towards. They've got, in other words, a why. Why am I doing this every day? Why am I going through these heartaches and, and uh, parking my nice car in mud puddles and getting chewed on by pit bulls all day long? Why am I doing that? Because there's a next level. There is something else coming to you. Um, if, you, if, you can, if you can help us figure out what it takes to get you there. Right. 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 Sure. Hey, Mike, do you remember, I think it was uh, Monday, maybe you and I were talking about, um, you know, what our market directors uh, look for in an agent, you know, because yeah. that's a big question, too. Like, are you are you looking for, you know, are our guys looking for rock stars? Are they looking for somebody just to, um, you know, plug and play or what kind of attitude do they have to have? Uh, Mike, do you remember us talking about um you know, kind of what, what our market directors look for in agents. And now that we've got Steven here, um, maybe he can, maybe he can kind of yeah. bridge that gap for us. Like, you know, what are you looking for? Um, you want to yeah, expand and, it and, all on that question, Mike? Or And, and to kind of piggyback on what Jeremy's saying, Steven, we've been kind of meeting with a lot of the final expense managers and everybody has a different need as far as an agent goes. Like what type of agent are they looking for? Is it somebody that 
maybe is a college graduate or they just got their license and they're still trying to just kind of get their feet wet. Everybody has a different type of agent that they're looking for. Maybe kind of give us a little insight on that. Yeah, I, I could care less about any of that stuff, to be honest with you. Um, I don't care what their education level is. Uh, I don't care what their personality is. Some of my best agents are grumpy. Uh, <laughs> right? You know, you always hear you always hear people say, yeah, that guy right there or that girl right there was born for sale because they've got a gregarious personality. And I, I don't think that has anything at all to do with it. It is the mindset that makes you successful. It's not your professionalism, the way you dress, the way your hair is cut, what car you drive, none of that matters. What matters is, are you gonna knock on the next door? If you are, you're gonna win. If you're not, you're never gonna win. Get out, go away. That's it. Sure. Gotcha. I love that. Um, what are so some, what I, are some... So wait, wait a second, I gotta keep talking. So the next question is, how do I find those people? Right. How do you find them? Uh, well, there's, there, I mean, I guess I could do a, a psychological test uh, to find those people, but you, 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 the truth is you just have to give people a chance and you've got to be um, quick to recognize when, when nobody's winning here and, uh, and draw it to a close uh, if, it's, if it's not working out. That's it. What are some areas of the final expense world that uh, provides an opportunity for somebody to not give up? Like, what are the things that they have to do to lock in on um, and not give up to see uh, success, um, whether they've been doing it a long time or whether they're brand new? Or are there certain activities or certain behaviors that agents need um, to lock into and, and not quit? What, what would some of those be? You got to knock on that next door and that comes from within. There's nothing external that's ever going to make that happen. We can make it more likely to happen, right? With a good lead. We can make it a little more likely with good training. You know, we can, we can make it a little more likely with good marketing materials, right? But at the end of the day, that's an internal thing. Uh, knocking on that next door is an internal thing. And sometimes you got to get lucky too, right? Uh, you can't rely on luck. You got to rely on whatever it is inside you that makes you uh, knock on that next door. And it, you know, it could be a dream or it could just be a personality trait or it could be a goal or a, you know, I don't know what it is. It's different for every successful agent out there, um, what's driving them to knock on the next door. But the only ones that win are the ones that do knock on that next door. I can tell you that for sure. Right. That's if you're looking for a shortcut or a magic script or uh, a sales presentation that can't lose or, and nobody ever, those things don't exist. Those are fantasies. Um, what does win is knocking on that next door. That's what wins. Right. I right. love it. Um, it sounds to me like you're talking a lot about resiliency, you know, bouncing sure. back from bouncing back from a success and, and not quitting, you know, bouncing back from a failure and not quitting, um, knocking on the next door. I know we have agents now that are, you know, taking phone calls and, uh, you know, it's taking that next call, you know, knocking on the next door, talking to the next person. Um, it, it's amazing to me uh, what happens when somebody can take a success or a failure and then reset for the next conversation. And a lot of agents will carry, um, you know, if it's a failure or a fear, they'll carry that into the next conversation. And the faster they can reset um, and be resilient um, to me is powerful. I love what you're saying there about, you know, just keep going after it, you know? Yeah, I like to, I, well, let me draw a couple of analogies. The first analogy I would draw is that sales is exactly like baseball and everybody always uses sports analogies, but the reason is because sports is analogous to life, right? So uh, baseball sluggers, I'm talking particularly sluggers, they strike out all the time. They strike out over and over and over again. And then they end up in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Because they keep right? cause they, cause they Because keep swinging. they forget it. They just put it behind them. What would you say, Mike? Because they keep swinging. Yeah, man, they keep swinging. And here's the second analogy I would give you. 
when I was a very young man, uh, I joined the Marine Corps. Okay. And I, I wanted to become a Marine. And those were, the reason was because I thought that the Marine Corps was elite. And it, when I was a teenager, there was a movie called Navy Seals with Charlie Sheen in it. And I didn't join the Navy and I didn't go for the Seals because I didn't think I had what it took. I thought I had what it took to be at the second level of awesomeness, which is a Marine. But I didn't think I had what it took to be at the first level of awesomeness, which is a Navy SEAL, right? I don't know if any of that's true, but that was my perception in those days. Well, as I went through a 21-year career in the Marine Corps, I met a lot of Navy SEALs and became friends with them. Here's what I discovered. None of them were superhuman. They were all regular guys, just like me. Every single one I ever met, just a regular guy. They couldn't run any faster than me. They couldn't shoot better than me. They really couldn't even swim better than me. They were just regular guys. But you know what they do? You know what sets them apart? They never quit. They don't know how to quit. And isn't that really the same thing that happens with great salespeople? Isn't it the same thing? Yeah, it's true. It is. Yeah, they don't know how to quit. So you so all of the we're kind of circling way back to a question you asked me a little bit ago. What are you looking for in an agent? That's what that's what I'm looking for. You don't quit. How do I find them? I go through a bunch of ones that do quit. <laughs> that's how I find them. Yeah. Yeah, I had a I had a guy one time say, I don't really recruit I don't really recruit and, you know, train rock stars. You know, I don't train those guys. I typically just find them. Yeah. By yeah, accident, you typically just find them. Yep. Yeah. And then there's a partnership that happens, and there's trust that happens. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're saying to the agent, if you'll if you'll just follow this, you'll follow our process. You'll you don't quit. You, I, I can help you build this future. I can build this career. And that's a big commitment from you as a manager. Um, you know, you've got somebody that's putting the livelihood of their family in your hands and saying, "Show me how to win," and you're saying follow this, don't quit, and we'll get you to the other side. And so, right. um, you know, Stephen, I, I, one thing that, you know, you know, since I've known you is that you are a man of your word. Um, you fulfill your obligations. You go above and beyond what people expect. And um, I think any agent that is looking to build that type of a career and, and build that kind of a future, um, you know, can do that with you successfully. So I just want to let you know that, that, you know, that, that doesn't go unnoticed. And I, I feel like everything you're saying today is right in, right in line with how you live. And uh, that's an important thing for people to know. So, uh, you know, I appreciate that about you and, and uh, your leadership here on the final expense side. So. Well, well uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm still working on developing it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not satisfied with my competence when it comes to leadership. So I'm, I'm still working on it, but I can tell you this leadership leaders are, are not born. They're made. And, uh, and you can train it. You can train leadership and, and at certain steps along the way, you're going to have to train yourself in leadership. Uh, right. I, I'm just going to go back to what you said, Stephen earlier is get in, give it a try. Don't quit. Follow somebody that knows what they're doing. Um, trust each other. And then, you know, that's where careers are made and where people find success and they find fulfillment in doing what we do, which is helping people, um, you know, in one of the worst days of their life and, and not have to deal with that financially. And, you know, it's a protection thing that we do. And so I appreciate what you do and, and your leadership there, Stephen, and hopefully well, we'll you'll get out there and keep protecting folks. All right. Awesome. Mike, you got anything else, brother? That's all I've got. Um, I want to thank you again, Stephen, for taking some time with Jeremy and I. And Jeremy, thank you again. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Uh, this is one of many that we're going to be doing with multiple managers and agents. So uh, we're we're excited to get this rolling.